Hello everyone, my name is Sloan and welcome to my YouTube channel. A few months ago, I had thrips. If you don't know what thrips are, they are a plant pest that we are going to talk about in great detail today, but I'm happy to report that I was able to get rid of them very quickly. It took, I mean, less than a month really. So I am here to share all of my tips and tricks. I did a ton of research when I was trying to get rid of them to figure out the most effective way to target all of the life cycles. So this is going to be walking you through the different life cycles that thrips have, what they look like at each stage. So you will see some pictures of bugs. I'm sorry, but that's the best way to be able to spot them on your plants is to know what to look for, as well as how long each stage lasts. I'm going to show you some pictures on what the damage can look like sometimes on your plants, but it does vary a lot depending on the type of plant. And then lastly, what to do to get rid of them. I'll talk about what I did and why and some other methods that you could try if what I tried maybe won't work for you. If you don't want to watch the entire video or if you really don't want to see pictures of bugs, I will link uh, timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the part where I actually talk about the steps you can take to treat it. And I'm also going to put the steps in text on what I would recommend to treat them in the bottom in the description below. So I really hope this helps and let's get started talking about bugs now. So we'll start our conversation out on some thrip facts. If you don't know what thrips are, they kind of have a reputation in the houseplant community of being one of the worst houseplant pests that you can get on your plant. So, but I'm here to share that it's really not that bad as long as you catch it early, or at least in my experience, I was able to get rid of it pretty quickly. I was very stressed out about it. So if you're feeling really stressed about your thrips, no need to worry, I am here to help. The first stage in the thrip life cycle is the egg. When thrips lay eggs, they lay them actually into the leaves, stems, flowers, and if it's a fruiting plant, because thrips are something that are common in greenhouses and outdoors, not just you know indoor plants that don't really fruit. They lay their eggs directly there. It, the eggs are not in the soil, they're like right in their leaves, uh, which can cause your leaves to look kind of gross or discolored. So that's one of the bad things about thrips is that even just like the laying of the eggs can damage your plants. And the eggs take 13 to 19 days to hatch. The next stage is either called the lymph or larva one. And in this stage, the larva will eat your plants. So both the larva and the adults do eat the leaves of your plants and they kind of like suck out the cell walls, kind of like a mosquito. You can kind of think of it that way. So they can also damage your leaves pretty heavily by eating your leaves and laying eggs. So it's it's not a great thing to have. The next stage is the second larval stage, which is pretty similar to the first larval stage as far as I can tell. And in terms of killing them, you can treat it pretty much the same. And the next two stages are really the only time that thrips can be found living in the soil. And this is the pre-pupa and pupa stages. So in these stages, they don't eat anything and they just hide in the soil. And this can be somewhat problematic because if you're treating your plant and you're mainly treating the leaves, you're missing everything that's in the soil. So we'll talk about how to target this stage specifically later on. And then finally, there is the adult stage. In the adult stage, thrips are the easiest to spot. They're black, whereas in the larval stage, they're kind of like little, a much, much, much smaller and they're white. So when I found thrips in my home, I never actually did find the larva. I only found the adults. And people say that when you find the adults, that's when things maybe are too far gone because the adults are the ones that lay the eggs. They can lay up to two to 10 eggs per day and they live 30 to 45 days. So they can live, you know, a pretty decent amount of time and lay a lot of eggs. So it is important to try and catch it early if you can. But I will say that I, again, was very successful with getting rid of thrips off of my house plants. They only really ended up on a few of my house plants and I have a lot. So don't freak out if you see them, you can totally do this. Another reason why thrips kind of have a reputation for being horrific is because they can fly. So it's fairly easy for them to spread across your collection. But one thing that I was really confused about when I first heard what thrips were and that they can fly was that I couldn't really tell, like if I saw a fungus gnat flying, is that a thrip? Um, and I've since found out that they don't fly very well and they don't fly like fungus gnats. When you see fungus gnats flying, they're literally flying. Like you can see it going through the air. Thrips kind of like glide and they, you know, can move a little bit better if there's a current. 
So if you see something that's flying pretty successfully, it's probably not a thrip. And I've actually never seen a thrip fly in real life. They will, however, walk across surfaces to get to other plants. So even if they're not flying, they'll go searching. And I did catch one after I was, I found my first thrip on one of my plants and I was moving plants around to try and isolate them. And I ended up taking one plant and moving it onto this desk. And that one turns out that I did see a couple thrips on it and they were crawling across the desk. So I quickly moved that but they will they will move around. So in my research of when thrips are kind of moving around, I found that some sources say, which all my sources are linked below if you want further thrip reading, I did a ton of research for this video and also just for my own personal benefit to know how to get rid of thrips. Uh, but I did find that apparently they fly most often and kind of move around most often in the early morning and late afternoon. I don't know that from experience, but that is what I found through research. The total lifespan of thrips are 60 days from egg to death. So again, that's a really long time. That is two months. So not great. They're just not a great houseplant pest at all. There are multiple different kinds of thrips. I think the ones that I dealt with were the Cuban laurel thrips, which what I found is that those are arguably the most common that are found kind of indoors on houseplants. I don't think it makes a huge difference in how you treat them, but you know, I just wanted to know what, if you wanted to know what the name of the common indoor thrip is, it's Cuban laurel thrips. If you're watching this video, you might have thrips in your house, and I would bet that it is probably sometime when there is some changing of the seasons. They're known for coming indoors and getting onto your plants around spring and fall. So if you don't have thrips in your house um, and you're just watching this to kind of learn, make sure to keep a closer eye around spring and fall. And for example, when I found them in my home, it was when it was starting to get a bit colder. I think it was like early October when I dealt with them. So just keep a closer eye on your plants around the spring and fall times. They like the changing of the weather. Also keep the closest eye on your monsteras. Thrips are known for really loving monsteras. They're also kind of known for being a little bit picky and liking particular plants. So sometimes you'll find that even if a thrip infested plant is right next to another plant, if it's a variety that they don't like, they might not be on that plant, but yeah, they're just kind of, they're particular about what they like, but they love monsteras. I had three monsteras at the time when I found thrips and I found thrips on all three of them. So just keep a little bit of an eye on those. <laughs> all right, now we will get into how to spot them. So the easiest thing probably is to look for the actual bug. However, if you are looking for the black bug, like I said earlier, the black bugs can lay a lot of eggs, so hopefully you can catch it before you kind of see the black bug. So the other option is to look for tiny, tiny little white, smaller than a piece of rice little larva, but they're really hard to see as well. So that's one of the hardest things about thrips is that they're just really hard to detect. So another thing that you can look for is uh, the damage on your plant's leaves. However, it looks a little bit different depending on the plant. I did notice that my Monstera Adamsonii wasn't doing very well for quite a bit of time and I couldn't really figure out what was going on with it. I think it maybe had thrips for longer than I expected um, because I found it on a different plant originally that led me to go search all my plants. But I'll put up here what my Monstera Adamsonii looked like kind of after, I think this was after I sprayed it down and started treatment and I decided to take a picture, but this is kind of what it looked like. And then I'll put a picture up of someone else's Monstera adansonii that the damage, their thrip damage looks a little bit similar to what I experienced as well. So like I said, thrips are really common on Monsteras and on the Monstera deliciosa, you can look for browning. It's similar across all Monsteras, but I'll put up some pictures of what you can expect to see on a Monstera deliciosa. Any amount of brown like this, specifically on the underside of the leaves, can be an indication that you might have thrips and you might want to take action. I also did find this on my large Monstera deliciosa, and I never did find thrips on my large one, but I treated it like all of my other Monsteras because I did see this browning, and so I'm pretty sure they were there and I just couldn't see them. Another indication can be black spots on the leaves because thrips do poop on the leaves, so if you see black spots. It could be thrip poop. I mean, it could be dust. It could be a million other things. So 
um, just keep an eye out and maybe if you see a combination of some of these things, that might be something that means that you should look into your plant or just start treating it just in case. And thrifts are very small. Even the adult bugs could easily be mistaken for a piece of dirt. The only reason that I really caught them is because they move. So if you see a black spot that's a little bit smaller than a grain of rice and they're very elongated, um, they're definitely skinnier and a little bit longer than a fungus gnat and are very pointy. Like you will not mistake it for a fungus gnat if you see it in real life and you see Basically something like that moving on your plant, that's a thrip. That's a really good sign that, I mean, it, it's right there. And that's how I found them on my plant as well. All right, now we're into the fun stuff. We can talk about how to get rid of them. So before we get super far into that, I will talk a little bit about my experience on what happened with me. Um, I did kind of briefly touch on this, but I was just kind of walking across my living room one day and I had a little Monstera Deliciosa that I had gotten for free at a plant event a while back. It didn't have any fenestrations. I mean, the thing was probably like this big and I saw a thrip moving and that's when I was pretty, cer pretty certain that it was a thrip and I freaked out. I was very, very scared because you hear all these horrible things about how horrible thrips are and I threw it outside immediately and started looking at all of my plants. I went to my large Monstera Adansonii, sure enough, I saw a thrip. I have a smaller Monstera Adansonii, saw thrips, and these were all in the same room, but like eight feet away from each other, and I have a lot of other plants in this room. And lastly, I went to my really large in like a eight or 10 inch pot, Monstera Deliciosa, didn't see any thrips on that one, but I did see browning. I took all of those plants outside and set them on my porch and then went around and checked all of my other plants. Thankfully, I didn't see any thrips on anything else, but I, you know, isolate as soon as possible. That is step one. Isolate all of your thrip infested plants as far away from you as you can. If you don't have room to isolate your plants, I personally would recommend making room. Do what you can. If you need to move plants out of a room in order to make a room just for your thrip infested plants, I would think it's worth it and I would recommend doing that. I know that that's a lot of work, but you, you don't want this to spread to your other plants and that's something that it might be a nuisance to move some of your plants around, but it's going to be worth it if you can keep your plants from getting infected. So I mentioned that I moved mine outside. Thankfully, it was really nice out at the time, so it worked out really well for me. I would recommend if you're moving your plants outside, you don't want them to burn ideally, and when your plants are used to the indoors, if you put them outside and they have the full sun on them for hours and hours, they will likely burn. So just put them in the shade. And one of the benefits of putting them outside, in fact, I would say the biggest benefit is that there are tons of bugs outdoors, including beneficial insects. When I put all these plants outside, I found signs of beneficial insects pretty much right away. Within like 24 or 48 hours, I found lacewing eggs and assassin bugs on my monsteras that were outdoors. And those are both insects that eat thrips. And so I kept my plants outside for a few weeks because I knew that the beneficial insects outdoors were going to take care of the problem probably better than I ever could. But on the first day that I found the thrips, I put all of those infected plants outside and then the next step is to mainly manually remove all of the insects. So any thrips that you can actually see, grab a Kleenex and just squash it or whatever way in which you can, you want to take that thrip off. If you don't mind bugs, then maybe you're just gonna pinch it with your fingers. I hate bugs, so I would definitely not doing that. In fact, I would say that owning houseplants has made me like more comfortable with bugs, which I think is a really good thing for me because pests are just something that come along sometimes with houseplants and it's not something to freak out about. It's something that you can take action on, but I really had to learn that, especially through my experience with thrips. So the next step that I would recommend is spraying down your plants with a high powered spray. So I took my plants outside and I think I had the setting on my hose on like full, you know how like the nozzle on the hose has different name settings and I just sprayed them sideways. And so the idea of like spraying it sideways is that if there were thrips, they would fly off the other way. You don't wanna spray it down because then they're just going to fall into the soil and you don't really want that. And then you're also watering your plant and if it's not time to water it, you probably don't wanna do that either. 
And so I did that with all of my plants outdoors. All of my indoor plants, you know, that weren't infested or that I couldn't find any signs on, I sprayed all of those off in the shower with, again, a high powered shower setting. All right, so now that you're done with the first few steps, we can talk about what specific tools that you can use to actually kill each stage of the thrips. So the first stage are the eggs. And unfortunately there aren't a ton of great ways to actually kill the eggs since they are in the leaves. But what you can do is you can trim off any leaves that look damaged, that's what I did. Um, and if they look damaged, there's a chance that there are actually eggs laid in them. And so if you just cut off those leaves and get rid of them, those thrips will never hatch. Um, you know, you can go really crazy with this and cut off a lot of leaves. It's up to you if you wanna do that. I didn't go that crazy, but I cut off anything that looked remotely like it could have any sort of damage just because I wanted to be extra safe and kill all of the eggs that I can. The next thrift stage are the pupae, and this was one that I struggled with a lot. I just couldn't find a lot of information about until I found beneficial nematodes. So beneficial nematodes, I'll actually get one out for you right now. So I got these on Amazon and they can come in like different little ways, I guess. This one comes in these little packets and they're inside of these little circles. They're microscopic little animals that will eat the pupae of the thrips. They will not hurt you at all. I did watch some YouTube videos where people were like very grossed out by these and wore gloves. I didn't, they're not gonna do anything to you. But you can buy them on Amazon. I didn't have any luck buying them in person. Maybe you can find them, but they do have a shelf life. And so I think a lot of places don't wanna keep them on the shelf because I mean, who's buying beneficial nematodes? It's kind of like a very niche thing to buy. So it's definitely easier to, to buy this online. And I will link everything that I can down below as well. So hopefully that will be helpful for you. But what I did to actually apply these was I stuck them on top of the soil and just a little packet. So there's like a few, a few packets in here. I stuck it on top of the soil on every single plant that I own, both the ones that had thrips and the ones that didn't. I stuck some sphagnum moss on top of the packet and kept that moist for a couple of weeks. Or maybe it was just a few days, but as long as I could, because the thing about nematodes is that they will only live in wet soil. They will die if your soil completely dries out. And so you want to at least keep it alive long enough to eat some thrips. So I kept a little bag moist and they will kind of just like move themselves around the soil all by themselves. You don't have to do anything. And after a while you can throw away the packet. And yeah, after you do that, you're pretty much done. You can reapply the nematodes after a certain amount of time. They will continue living and populating if your soil continues to be moist. I let my plants dry out a lot. So I'm guessing most of the nematodes I applied have died since. I'll probably reapply the nematodes again, like before they expire. I think I bought these in October and they expire on the 15th of January, 2022. So that's actually like right now. So I'll reapply these really soon. And yeah, once you do that, you're kind of good to go. You don't have to do anything else with getting rid of the pupae. And another thing about beneficial nematodes is that they are also supposed to kill fungus gnats. I can't really speak on whether they work that well for fungus gnats. I know people have had like fantastic results with it. I just know that I don't have thrips in my house anymore. So I at least give some credit to the nematodes for sure. So the next thing that I did to get rid of my thrip problem was to spray all of my plants, especially the infested ones um, once I brought them back in with Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. It's a spinosad, and part of the reason that I wanted to use this in conjunction with the nematodes is that that's actually a way that a lot of greenhouses keep their thrip problem at bay. They use a combination of a spinosad and beneficial nematodes. A lot of greenhouses will like spray nematodes across all of the plants. Like how crazy is that? Imagine if we could do that indoors. But in my research, I found that these are two that will work really well together. And that's important as well. You don't want to, you know, use nematodes on your plants and then use something else that's actually just gonna kill your nematodes. Like that wouldn't work out very well. But spinosad will not kill nematodes. It will only kill thrips. And this is what will target the adult thrips and the larva. And so I sprayed all of the plants in my collection, like around every like week, two weeks. It just kind of depended 
Um, probably towards the beginning, I sprayed them every week and then, you know, got a little bit more lackadaisical as time went on and I wasn't really seeing any thrips. But you want to keep up on it just because, remember earlier I was talking about the life cycle and how many eggs the adult thrips can lay, etc. So you just want to make sure that you're continuing to spray this because it does kill on contact. So at least I'm... 99.9% certain that it kills on contact. You can also spray it kind of in the soil too, because again, it's not gonna hurt the nematodes that are in the soil, just in case, you know, an adult thrip has fallen into the soil or something like that. I also did spray my plants with neem oil. I alternated a little bit with Captain Jack's and neem oil. Neem oil is not gonna work super well against thrips. It's just not strong enough, but it is nice to kind of alternate to, you know, not do too much on your plants. I have also heard other people mention that thrips can create a resistance against Captain Jack's or other sprays. So I just kind of sprayed with neem oil to mix it up and be a little bit careful. You probably won't have thrips have a resistance against Captain Jack's unless you have like a really bad problem. But I did want to share that this is something that I did that may or may not have made a difference, but I did do it, so I'll tell you about it. And that's pretty much all that I did to get rid of my thrips. I cut off the leaves to get rid of the eggs, I used beneficial nematodes to target the pupae stage, and then I sprayed with Captain Jack's to kill any adults and larvae that might be left. But there are other methods that I found through my research that you might want to try if you know, if you live in Canada, I don't think you can get Captain Jacks in Canada, unfortunately. So I'll go through a few other methods with you as well. So one of the huge things that a lot of people recommend to do to get rid of thrips is to use a systemic. I'll put up a picture here of an example of one. I've never used a systemic, but from what I've read, it's fantastic at killing household pests. The way that a systemic works is that it infiltrates into your actual plant and makes your plant toxic to pests. So for example, with a th when a thrip would eat the leaves of your plants, it would be toxic and so the thrip would die. A systemic is not going to target the pupa stage, however, but you know, the pupa eventually turns into an adult thrip anyway. So, you know, it just kind of depends. If you target all of the stages, you're gonna get rid of them much more quickly. And if you think about it, if a pupa turns into an adult thrip and then lays eggs and then eats your plant, like you're just gonna have more thrips even though the systemic is killing the adults. It's just gonna take longer for all the adults to die because adults can still lay eggs. Another thing about a systemic is that I am not entirely sure how safe the systemic is for beneficial insects. So I know that I have some springtails in some of my pots. If you don't know what a springtail is, they are little tiny bugs that are honestly kind of cute in like a weird way because they kind of jump and they just live in your soil and they eat dead matter and they're really good for your soil and really good for your plants. So I don't really want to kill those. I mean, I, I get it. Some people might not want those in their house at all, but like if you're bringing dirt inside your house and you're bringing plants inside your house, like you're bringing nature in and nature's going to come in and you're going to have pests and you might have beneficial insects as well. And like, you might as well just like enjoy the beneficial insect insects, especially the springtails, because they're not flying around, like they're just living in your soil. You probably won't even see them at all, but I didn't want to risk killing those because they are really good for your plants. I'm also not sure how much a systemic is safe for pets. I have a dog and he doesn't really try to eat any of my plants, but I didn't want him to eat one with a systemic and I didn't know if that would make it more toxic. So that's another reason why I didn't go with a systemic, but I know it's been very, very good for a lot of people. Another fantastic way to get rid of thrips is through predatory insects. So three predatory insects that you can bring inside of your home that will eat thrips are predatory thrips, pirate bugs, and green lacewings. Pirate bugs in particular, I've heard really good things about. I, um, I know I just talked about how I don't wanna kill springtails, but like, I don't wanna bring in bugs if I can avoid it. Like if they're already there and they're beneficial, I'm not gonna kill them. But like the thought of like ordering lace wings and releasing them in my house and then like they can fly, like I just, mm, no, no, no. I'm gonna try to like avoid that as much as I can. But that is, I mean, it works super well. And if you have enough of a thrip problem and if you can keep all of your predatory insects, your beneficial insects fed, you might have a life cycle of beneficial insects and that'll help with a lot of pest problems. So if that's something that you're fine with, I mean, I think it works really well, but I don't like bugs, so I didn't want to do it. Maybe someday I'll get really desperate and do it, but that day was not today. <laughs> 
Another thing you can try is diatomaceous earth. So I've actually never used diatomaceous earth. I think I might be planning on trying it, but diatomaceous earth is this powder that basically acts like microscopic little razors that cut up any bugs. You can sprinkle it on top of your plant's leaves, you can put it in the plant's soil, and if you put it in the plant's soil, that could potentially kill the pupae, that could kill the adults, that could kill the larvae. The thing about diatomaceous earth is that it isn't razor sharp when it gets wet, and so you might have to reapply it a lot. You know, if you dust it all over your plant's leaves, your plant is going to look like it's covered in white powder because it is and then you're gonna have to be careful not to like bump that and get it everywhere and get water on that and it can be kind of messy but I think it does work very well. And the main reason that I didn't use diatomaceous earth was just that you cannot use it in conjunction with Captain Jack's because Captain Jack's is a spray and it's wet so I guess in theory you could spray Captain Jack's, wait for it to dry, and then apply diatomaceous earth that would be fine, but then you have to wait for it to dry and that's kind of a lot of work. And the thing about diatomaceous earth with nematodes is that it will cut up the nematodes as well. I don't know that completely for certain, but when I had watched YouTube videos on specifically nematodes and diatomaceous earth, people had said that that was a concern. It wasn't worth the risk for me to find out. Like I'll just use the spinosad and the nematodes and not worry about the diatomaceous earth. And then another little thing about diatomaceous earth is that it sounds super scary and then it could like, you know, it's gonna cut up the bugs and like, what if you breathe it in? What if you like put it on your hands? Is it safe? Um, definitely don't breathe it in. That's not gonna be good, but people actually eat diatomaceous earth. Like they mix it into their drinks. So it's not dangerous, not for humans at least. Um, not as far as I know, like if people are eating it, it can't be that bad, which I cannot imagine eating it. But if you do choose to go the diatomaceous earth route, don't be afraid of it. It's going to be fine. And the last thing that you can try is sticky traps. So thrips are actually attracted to the color blue. So ideally, if you are wanting to kill thrips or even just keep an eye on your thrip population, blue sticky traps are going to work better. They'll kill the adults when they crawl onto them or fly onto them. You can also do the yellow ones. Thrips might be attracted to it, but it's really blue that they're going to be attracted to the most. This is another thing that greenhouses use. So a lot of greenhouses will use blue sticky traps to keep an eye on what their throat population looks like. When the throat population gets really bad, they will spray spinosad and beneficial nematodes to kind of keep the population down. I've never actually been in a greenhouse that does this, but again, I did do a lot of research to try and figure out you know, if it works for a greenhouse, it's probably gonna work pretty well for me in my home on a smaller scale. So that's part of the reason that I went the route that I did. Unfortunately, I don't have blue sticky traps. I'm not entirely sure where to buy them. I did use some yellow sticky traps and I never did catch an adult thrip on them, but I also think I caught my thrip population pretty early and kind of most of my infected plants went outside anyway. All right, so I think you've probably heard me talk about bugs for long enough. That is all for today. I really hope that this was helpful. I know when I first found thrips on my houseplants, my heart sunk. I was so worried. I thought I was going to lose so many plants and I ended up only losing one plant and it was because I threw it away because I just really didn't care about it. It was the small Monstero Deliciosa that I first found thrips on. And that's another thing to keep in mind as well. You don't have to keep your infested plants. If you find a plant and it's covered in bugs and you just really don't want to do the effort to deal with it, you don't have to. You can throw it away and that's perfectly fine. I know it sucks because obviously normally we spend money on plants. In this case, the plant I threw away was free, so I wasn't out anything, but it's better that you throw away one plant than have, you know, have to treat your entire collection or get rid of your entire collection. But I do really want to say that, again, if you found thrips on your plants, you can do this. There's no need to freak out. You can get rid of them. It is not a hopeless cause, and I really hope this video helped you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and it will definitely be a little bit of a happier topic. So make sure to stick around for it and subscribe. Bye.